so today we'll be conducting for chlorine demand we have taken 5 beakers a volume of 1000 ml of water that is 1 liter of water is taken in each beaker 2 4 6 8 and 10 milligrams of bleaching powder is added to the respective beakers this is the chlorine solution that is prepared by dissolving bleaching powder in it. So what are we supposed to do? We are supposed to add 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10 ml of bleaching powder and the same procedure as for the residual chlorine is being repeated for this. 2 ml of chlorine solution is measured. For the first beaker, 2 ml of chlorine solution is added. Now, 4 ml of chlorine solution is measured. It is added for the second beaker. 6 ml of chlorine solution is measured and is added for the third beaker. 8 ml of chlorine solution is measured and is added to the fourth beaker. 10 ml of chlorine solution is measured and is added for the fifth beaker. We have taken the beaker 1 here for which 2 ml of chlorine water was added. Now we will take out 25 ml of sample from this. Twenty five ml of sample is being measured. Is added to the conical flask. Two ml of acetic acid. So 2 ml of acetic acid is mixed <coughs> to the sample. A pinch of potassium iodide is added. As you can see there is no change in color. Hence the residual chlorine is not present. You can note down the value as 0. We have taken second sample here for which 4 ml of chlorine water was added. Now we shall take 25 ml of sample out of this. Twenty five ml of sample is added to the conical flask. Two ml of acetic acid is measured. is added to the sample. The indicator potassium iodide, a pinch of it is added. As you see no change in color, again the residual chlorine is absent, hence note down the value as 0. We have taken third sample here for which 6 ml of chlorine water was added. Now we shall take 25 ml out of this. A 25 ml of sample is added to the conical flask. Two ml of acetic acid is taken again. A pinch of potassium iodide is added to the sample. Again as you can see there is no change in color. 
so hence signifying that there is no residual chlorine note down the value as 0 so we have taken sample 4 here for which 8 ml of chlorine water was added so we shall take 25 ml of sample out of this So 25 ml of sample is added to the conical flask. Two ml of acetic acid is measured. And it's added to the sample. A pinch of potassium iodide is added to the sample there is still no change in color signifying that the residual chlorine is zero note down the value as zero so here we have taken sample 5 for which 10 ml of chlorine water was added so we shall take 25 ml sample out of this A 25 ml of sample is added to the conical flask. So for this 2 ml of acetic acid is measured. A 2 ml of acetic acid is added to the sample. A pinch of potassium iodide is added to the sample so as you can see for this sample there is a change in color it has changed to yellow color now titrate it until you get pale yellow color you are titrating it against standard sodium thiosulfate solution the dark yellow color has faded out to pale yellow color now add 1 ml of starch solution After adding 1 ml of starch solution, you can see it has changed to dark blue color here. You have to titrate it against standard sodium thiosulfate again. You can stop for this stage. The dark blue color has vanished. Note down the burette reading for the calculation of decidual chlorine. Detect the calculated residual chlorine value from the amount of chlorine added to the beaker that will give you the chlorine demand.